Hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to solve this question number 11 from the review worksheet. We are told a square symmetric matrix has the property that taking its transpose leaves the original matrix unchanged. That's what they mean by symmetric. And then we have to go and prove something about eigenvalues. So first we have to actually get ahead around what this symmetric matrix would be like. So let's just start exploring a little bit. Let's just have a generic 2x2 two two matrix, A, B, C, D, with A, B, C and D all elements of the real numbers. And now we'll write the transpose. Remember the transpose, each row, first row becomes the first column, and the second row becomes the second column. That's a D. So what would we need in order for this matrix, A, to equal its own transpose. That's what the uh, the property of a symmetric matrix. Well, any value A would still appear in the first row, first column. Any value D would still appear in row two, column two. It's these ones here. So value of B would have to equal C, and value C would have to equal B, equivalent statement. Therefore, if we have a matrix of the form A, D, and then both of these have the same value. Let's call them both value B. This is a symmetric matrix, a two by two symmetric matrix, because as we did a transpose, we'd end AB, first column, BD, second. So A and D can be different. B has to equal uh, this element here on this opposite diagonal, has to be the same. Now let's, let's go back and see what we're supposed to do with this. We've been told, Prove the eigenvalues for this 2x2 two two symmetric matrix. The fact that it says any means we have to use pronumerals to make it a general solution rather than specific numbers. So prove the eigenvalues must be real. Hmm. Uh, we will note that A, B and D are elements of the real number system because it says we can assume that. Now let's just go about finding the eigenvalues. Remember, a matrix A multiplied by some vector x equals a scalar lambda times the same vector x. If this is true, then lambda is the eigenvalue, x is the eigenvector. Let's do a little bit of matrix algebra equals 0. So ax minus lambda, let's pop the identity matrix in here, equals 0. Now we can factor out x, lambda times i, factor out vector x on the right equals 0. And as we've learned in class, for this statement to avoid a trivial solution where the eigenvector uh, equals the 0 vector, we want this matrix to be singular. So we can claim, we can conclude that a minus lambda i, the determinant, must be 0 which makes this a singular singular matrix. Now let's go ahead with this. Uh, vector, uh, just repeat, but matrix A, A, B, B, D, subtract. Now if we do lambda times the identity matrix, instead of a leading diagonal of ones, we'll have lambdas, and lambda by zero is still zero. So this is the matrix A minus matrix lambda I, we still need the determinant of that whole thing to equal zero. So one more little bit. A minus lambda, B minus nothing is B, B minus nothing is B, D minus lambda equals zero. And how do we find a determinant of a two by two matrix? It's the product of the leading diagonal, subtract the product of the opposite diagonal. So A minus lambda, D minus lambda, minus B squared equals zero. I think we should expand and collect like terms. A times D is AD, minus A lambda, minus D lambda, plus lambda squared, minus b squared equals zero. 
So it doesn't look quite like a quadratic yet, but we can do so. Remember, lambda is what we're solving for. A, D, and B are constants. These are the constants that would have originally inhabited our 2 by 2 matrix. So let's put lambda squared at the front. Now I have minus A lambda minus D lambda. Then I have plus A D minus B squared. Probably better if I write this as minus A plus D lambda. And then I'll just put brackets around the AD minus B squared so that it really does look like a quadratic where the B value is negative A plus D and the C value. This is where the quadratic formula will be required to solve for lambda. So minus of B would actually just be A plus D plus or minus the square root. B squared, that's A plus D squared minus 4. Uh, A is 1 here, so we don't need to write that. Times AD minus B squared. All divided by 2. A plus D plus or minus. A plus D squared. Well, that's A squared plus 2AD plus D squared. Here, multiply out this 4 minus 4AD plus 4B squared, all divided by 2. Collecting like terms, we have A plus D plus minus. So we'll have A squared. 2AD minus 4AD is minus 2AD plus D squared. Still plus 4B squared, all divided by 2. And this is the point where we have to stop and go, what do we need for this to become a real solution? Well, we need a positive value for this expression under the radical sign. If that turned out to be less than 0, we'd have imaginary solutions. Well, we don't want that. We want to prove, we've been asked to prove, that these always give real solutions. So. See, on the face of it, well, we know that anything squared is positive, and that's positive, and that's positive, but this is the bit here that's annoying. We really can't tell what's going to happen to that. Look at the first three terms only, just the first three terms. That's a perfect square. Just like we had A plus D, we can have a minus in the middle. So our factorization just for the first three terms would be a minus d squared. We would still have plus 4b squared and divide by 2. Now I've run out of space to keep writing so I'll just describe the result. Whatever a minus d comes to, positive or negative, doesn't matter. It becomes squared. So this thing is a positive number. b doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. b squared is a positive number. We have the sum of two positive terms it must be a positive number under the radical, which we can therefore claim that lambda would be an element of the real number system because we're always going to end up with square root of a positive, uh, which gives a real answer. doesn't matter how big or small A, D and B are. There we have it. We've managed to prove that the eigenvalue of a symmetric 2 by 2 matrix will always be a real number.